contact Mr. Grasso about the feasibility of his continued participation with the regional committee to study the feasibility or the possibility of the casino being developed in Palmer. And I was finally able to speak to Mr. Grasso in person today. Um, he is very interested in serving in that capacity if the um, interest is still there. And I further understand that there's a meeting Thursday this week, so if uh, you would like to appoint Mr. Grasso. We did uh, move and vote to uh, encourage him to stay active, actively involved as the alternate member from the selectmen to that group. Okay, that's the point I wanted to be clear. Who's yeah. the alternate? Because we get one vote. Well, that would be the selectman okay. gets the one vote, and Mr. Grasso's continued participation and his uh, suggestions and comments and criticisms, I would welcome. Okay. But if we only get one vote, then it goes to you as a selectman. Right. Yes, sir. Sure. sure. Thursday, there will be a vote that will be brought up. Uh, Thursday's meeting will be quite interesting. Yes, I bet it is. Okay. Item 7, review of weekly mail. Conservation Commission sent out a notice for the next meeting. And the next meeting will be, uh, let's see, I'm going to read this so I get it right. Please note that during the month of September, the Belcher Town Conservation Commission will hold one meeting on Monday, September 14, 2009. This meeting will be held in the Conservation Commission office at the Town Hall, room 101. So that meeting will be held on Monday, September 14, 2009. So if you plan to attend, that will be at the Town Hall Conservation Commission office. Thank you. Um, there is a well, letter of interest, and actually it's a letter I have considerable interest uh, for a person who's volunteering to take my place on the Community Preservation Committee. No one can take your place. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, awful. Just yeah. one person? One person, and this has been out there now for about uh, eight, ten weeks, and uh, the person is very good. Uh, and uh, so we will presumably put it on the agenda for the next meeting. Because the well, deadline the is, still, is still a deadline. And well, the process is that the Community Preservation Committee themselves will view the applicants and make a recommendation to us. Sikulowski uh, advising myself and everyone else that they had the closing on Foley Field, the Lake Wallace uh, turnover of the property from EDIC to the town of Elkin Town. And that took place Friday, August 14th. And once again, it is to be complimented for all the effort we put into making this actually happen. It's a good thing for the town, that's for sure. Jim, are you going to talk about PVTA? Go ahead. I'm going to do it. Uh, the PVTA routing has uh, taken effect, the new routing 
uh, three day a week. It started, I believe it was the 10th or the 14th, the effective date. Yep. And I spoke to one of the drivers, and uh, ridership has increased, uh, not by great numbers, but at least by numbers. So it's encouraging, and the big point to be made is that riding the shuttle between Belchertown or around Belchertown and on to, uh, to where is not restricted to seniors. That's open for everyone. And uh, please use it or else we're going to lose it comes the new year. The other point I want to make out, uh, Jim, maybe I can direct it to you. I'm going to continue speaking about the retention pond at the uh, property down here by Tractor Supply and the lumber yard. Uh, I understand that perhaps that is in keeping with the uh, uh, plans that were submitted. Am I, am I correct that what's there is, uh, is what was uh, required? Is that what I'm My understanding is the planning board had some concerns over the site that they invited the owner of the site to a planning board meeting to discuss the issue and the owner chose not to attend that meeting. Well, the town, the way I see it, has a serious safety issue the way the pawn appears to be now. A young person, an old person, could stumble and fall into that pit. We have a town law now that says if you dig a trench, you have to put a six foot fence around it. This is more than just a trench. We've got to have a f at least a fence put around that, I want to call it an ISO, but I shouldn't do that. Go for it. Part. What's that? Go for it. Go for it. How do we go about insisting that something be done on a safety measure to correct the error that's been created here? This, this is terrible. Um, well, it might be appropriate to ask the town planner if, in fact, they are in violation of the site plan. If they are in violation of the site plan, what are the remedies available? Um, in general, there are not a lot of remedies available to violation of the site plan unless there's a special permit attached to it. Um, if I had an underground pool in my yard, I'd have to have a fence around it. Yeah, how about the trench rule? Even if it were a you know, property that was not in the site. I think the trench is, was dug well before this new trench law came in place. So I think the trench law applies, at least my interpretation, the trench law applies to any new trench. You think that would be grandfathered? As a, I mean, a, this is a permanent thing. This isn't, this isn't going to be filled in tomorrow. Well, I think the question you're asking is how might we exert some pressure yeah. on the property owner to do the right thing? And the answer is I don't know yet. But we will yeah. ask Mr. Bohm to yeah, ask look Bohm into that. the possibilities of what our options are. And if there's something that can be done prior to our next meeting that is legitimate, then we would authorize them to go forward with whatever that might be. Okay, thank you. Um, certainly, at the minimum, we could get you Mr. Uh, Goldick's home phone number. I'm sure that would accomplish a lot. Well, a, a phone call from a member of the Board of Selectmen might accomplish more than a letter from the town well, planner. Give me his number and I'll call. You'd be surprised about that, actually. Is that it? Yeah. Thank you.